Now, it's been called the new threat from the sky, but nearly two years into the war in Ukraine, cheap kamikaze drones have become commonplace and are often the weapon of choice in place of more expensive artillery shells. Now, according to the drone unit of the Ukrainian army, kamikaze drones, like this one, have destroyed more than 130 Russian tanks and around 200 armoured vehicles since January the 1st alone. But Russia also uses lots of drones. And so stopping Russian drones is becoming ever more important for the Ukrainians. One effective way to do this is the use of drone guns. Now, these state-of-the-art weapons jam signals between a drone and its operator, stopping them before they can reach their target. DW's Nick Connolly met with a Ukrainian startup which says drone guns will soon be as essential as a helmet or body armor for soldiers on the front lines. It might look like a toy, but this drone gun is packed with cutting-edge technology. Its inventors say they've tried to keep things as simple as possible. It only has four buttons. Most soldiers will only really need on and off. The engineers are convinced that technology like this can make the difference between life and death for soldiers on Ukraine's front lines. Signal jamming is vital. Without it, any equipment you have will be destroyed in an instant. Before drones, your opponent had to get much closer to be able to attack a tank with a grenade launcher. Now, drones can fly 10 kilometers and take out tanks at that distance. The technology is a response to the massive impact cheap kamikaze drones have had on both sides of the front line. This video purports to show a Ukrainian drone destroying a Russian tank. Thousand dollar drones destroying targets worth millions has become the norm in this war. The guns disrupt the signal between operators and their drones. They can also block navigation systems like GPS and GLONASS. Either way, the drone can't hit its target. We ask to see how it works. This is a typical drone used for observation on the front lines. Yuri is waiting for it a few kilometers down the road with the drone gun. You see that, we've lost signal. The red light means we've lost connection and we've also lost video. This drone has the return to home function. That means it can find its way back on autopilot. But most cheaper kamikaze drones don't have that feature. Instead, they'll stop and eventually crash without connection to their operator. It's an endless game of cat and mouse. Both sides change their frequencies and navigation systems, and both sides are increasingly able to operate around the clock as night vision technology becomes more widespread. Ukraine, these men say, has to innovate faster to have any hope against Russia's vast resources. They're painfully aware of how vulnerable drones have made anyone in a frontline trench. I talk to new soldiers who spend a whole lot of their own cash on fancy NATO standard helmets and body armor. That's not going to protect them from kamikaze drones. A thousand dollar set of body armor just isn't going to make a difference. Without some kind of electronic warfare kit, you're basically unprotected. It took over a year of intense fighting for the generals on both sides of this war to understand what improvised civilian drones could do. They're just as behind when it comes to electronic warfare, Anton tells us. It's time Ukraine doesn't have to lose. Let's talk about this with Ulrike Franke, a defence expert at the European Council on Foreign Relations, with a special focus on the impact of new technologies on warfare like drones and AI. Thanks so much for your time today, Ms. Franke. Um, how has the use of drones on the battlefield by both sides, Russia and Ukraine, uh, how has this impacted the course of this war? Hmm. I mean, it's always difficult to tell how one weapon system in particular impacts a war, and I'm always wary to say that they are kind of combat decisive and, and decide the war. But I wouldn't have wanted to imagine Ukraine's defense without these drones. Basically, they are now there at every moment of combat. They are used before an attack to recognize an area, to monitor an area, to know where to attack in the first place. They are used during an attack to guide troops, to let them know where to go. They are used for attacking, so either the drones are armed themselves or they guide, say, artillery or other types of weapon systems. And afterwards, they are used to, well, 
find dead comrades, for example, or again reconnoiter the area again. So they really are part of the um, of the operations at, at any time and at any time of the day. We have thousands of drones in the skies over Ukraine. And, and many of these uh, drones being used um, are kamikaze drones, so they are destroyed when they hit their target. Who's supplying these drones? Hmm. Yes, indeed. That's an interesting development in this war that we are seeing way more kamikaze drones, one-way drones, um, loitering munitions, they've also been called, than, than other systems uh, where the focus was before. Um, who is who is uh, um, supplying them? It depends a bit on the model. So we still, even though we're now two years into the war, we still see a lot of civilian systems, so initially civilian systems that are being uh, modified and then used as kamikaze Kamikaze drones. And these civilian systems are primarily Chinese made, mainly because, you know, a Chinese manufacturer has almost a monopoly worldwide on civilian drones. And then you have a wide range of military systems that are very often produced in Ukraine. So Ukraine now has a very vibrant and very innovative um, uh, drone industry and they produce them. And then there are, of course, also systems that are being supplied by the Western supporters. But at this point, it really is, is a lot of, yeah, initially civilian systems and, and systems made and produced and, and manufactured by the Ukrainians themselves. We saw in our report that there are ways of countering uh, drones. Now, is this technology also able to intercept more advanced drones or, or swarms of drones? Yeah, that's a very good question. So as the report rightly stated, it really has been a cat and mouse game between drones and anti-drone systems in Ukraine. And signals really is the main the main uh, area of focus at the moment um in terms of stopping up that that electronic systems jammers etc are the best tool against uh, against swarms because swarms means that a lot of drones are attacking simultaneously and that makes it difficult or even harder to shoot down because you know you have only so many guns and only so much ammunition. So electronic systems may be the right answer for that. But you point to a to a real problem, which is that in order to jam a drone, you need to know the frequency of that drone. Now, more advanced systems can sometimes you know detect the frequency on the fly, so to speak. But nevertheless, you need to know the frequency of the drone, and you may not be able to to jam all of them. So maybe more sophisticated systems, or even just other systems that you calibrate it to may be, uh, may be harder to stop. So that's definitely one challenge. Um, and the other challenge is that we now see also a push towards more autonomy and even artificially enabled, artificially intelligent enabled um, systems being used exactly in order to evade these electronic uh, jamming measures. Because if you don't have an operator anymore who needs to be linked to the drone at all time, uh, if you disrupt the link to that non-existing oper operator, nothing happens. So because of these um, jammers, we, we almost see a push towards more autonomy and more AI. So again, really a cat and mouse game and a system that works well today may not work tomorrow. All right. Ulrike Franke, a defense expert at the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you so much for your time today and thanks for bringing us up to date. Thanks for having me. And for more, I can now bring in Arthur Holland Michel. He's an expert on drones and artificial intelligence and a senior fellow at the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. Welcome to DW. Arthur, the pressure to invent new drones as well as anti drone technology must be significant now more than ever. How do you see this developing? You know, what we're seeing in this war is an arms race with drone technology that is, is going at a faster rate than in any previous conflict. Every time one side develops a new counter drone technology, the other side is already thinking of ways to get around that. Um, and so I, I think it, it it's going to lead to what's happening still at the moment, which is kind of like a bit of a stalemate where the drone technology is continuing to have like a, a significant impact without it tipping too far in either direction because of, as we heard, this kind of ongoing cat and mouse. So let's look towards the future. Will wars at some point be fought drone versus drone without any soldiers involved? So I, I thought you were going to uh, go there. And, and yes, one of the directions that this cat and mouse game is taking warfare in is making drones more autonomous. And that's because these jammers, these jamming guns that we saw in the report, they target the communication signal between the human 
and the drone. Both sides in this war do already have drones with some autonomous capabilities. We just don't know how extensively they've used those capabilities, whether they're willing to use those capabilities, or you know if they're even effective. But we're going to see more and more automation, maybe not drone on drone warfare in the near future, but increasing automation at every step of the sort of drone kill chain. Mm -hmm. So right now, drones are still mostly operated by people. But from what you say, does that mean that artificial intelligence will soon decide which targets to strike and, and which not to strike? It's going to go in stages. So the next stage from here is that a human will decide what target they want to strike, but the AI system will decide how to take that target out. Um, it's in a deeper future where you might have a human say, uh, yeah, I want you to take out any target that you find in that area. And then the drone goes in and actually makes these calculations or estimations as to you know which uh, target to take out, how to do it, and to sort of make those human style Uh, decisions, but we're still a bit of a ways from getting to that future uh, mm -hmm. yet. Human-style decisions, but without the human error, I'm assuming, will that likely result in a lower death toll or higher, or does it depend on the intentions on whoever launched the drone? That is exactly the, the point there. I mean, if you have the intention to cause mass indiscriminate harm with an autonomous uh, a drone or a swarm of drones, then you can absolutely do so. If you want to be more discriminate, more targeted and in compliance with the laws of war, um, it's actually still unclear whether drones will fully help that. Not because they won't be accurate, but because they can act in very unpredictable ways. And we don't know how the law will actually serve to uh, ensure accountability in those cases. The laws of war have not yet been tested against an autonomous drone that goes haywire. So it might be possible to regulate the use of drones, but whether or not the drones can then actually abide by those rules is not clear, is what you're saying. Absolutely. The compliance part is the big question mark. We can come up with rules till the cows come home, but if the technology just isn't up for it, then it's all still theoretical. Now, drones are very cheap. We heard it in the report compared to you know tanks or warships, but if anyone can buy and use a drone, Doesn't that also have the potential to make wars a lot more complex? Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 a, it's an innovation. It's an evolution in warfare on on the same level as any other democratizing technology. Like, say, I don't know the you know semi-automatic rifles. Um, the 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 big sort of caveat to that though is that the kind of drones that you know sort of everyday citizens, civilians, non-military, non-state groups can get a hold of um, are, are pretty small. You know, they're limited in their capacity. They're limited in their range. They might be able to carry out sort of smaller attacks. But if you're talking about the sort of large scale drone warfare that is practiced by, say, Russia or Ukraine, that's still out of uh, reach to, you know, most mo most people. But but you're right that there, there is a, a lot of sort of drone chaos that is in our in our future as this technology just gets more and more and more accessible. Fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for shedding some light on it. That was Arthur Holland Michelle, an expert on drones and artificial intelligence. Thanks for your time.